In this video, we'll be looking at connecting PHP Storm to our Azure web server. First thing we'll do is I have you open up your Azure portal. Reason I do that is because we need to get some of the connection information out of Azure to be able to put it into PHP. I find it's easier if we just open up Azure right away. Then we'll open up PHP Storm. We'll set up our project that we'll be using throughout uh, the course here. Then we'll set up our connection to Azure and then we'll show the connections working. Once we have that set up, any code we develop inside of PHP Storm with a couple of clicks will automatically upload it because of the connection we set up, automatically upload it to your Azure web server and then you can see what it looks like on the Azure web server. The notes I'm using for this video I posted in Learn and Stout underneath week one, creating your website. It's titled Connecting PHP Storm to your Azure Web Server Notes. So if you'd like to follow along on the notes as you do it, those are there for your reference also. The first thing I'm going to ask you to do is log into your Azure portal. Once again, the web address is portal.azure.com. I start, type, start typing in portal. It recognizes, I hit enter, takes you to selecting your account, you choose your UW Stout email address, click on it's a school account, then next step is they're going to ask you for your password. Once again, remember this is your UW Stout email password. Go ahead, sign in. goes through its loading screen here. Once the portal loads in, this should look a little familiar with you. This is the web app. This is our web server. This is PHP. This is where our MySQL database is located. Go ahead and click on that. It loads it up. And at this point in time, this is one of the spots where we'll be getting some of the information from. We'll be using this address here shortly. And then also click on properties here underneath settings and we'll be using some of this information here. Now, what I'm going to do is go over Startup PHP Storm. It's found either on your recently used programs list or underneath all programs, JetBrains, PHP Storm. Goes through the process of loading it. It does seem to take a while to load it. Once again, we have our educational license, so we have the full subscription for a year. Here, the welcome screen to PHP Storm. We haven't necessarily set up a project before, so we're going to create a new project. At this point in time, in the left column, we will say it's a PHP empty project. The location, the location, I want you to just wherever you'd like to store it, but I want you to create a special directory called ICT475-your username. So it would be Olson KE at that point in time. Here we need to change the PHP language to 5.4. That's what's automatically installed on your server. We want to match them up as best as possible. We don't, we're not going to use an interpreter, so we don't, we don't have to specify one at this point in time. And we go ahead and click Create. It goes through, it adds some information in. It gives you some tips at startup. You can uncheck that if you want. I close it. At this point in time, on the left side, we can see this is our local directory. This is our project we created. And I tried to expand it, but there's nothing there in that project right now. So we've created our project. Next step is actually to create the connection to our web server. So what, you, what we can do is go up to Files and then click on Settings. Here in the Settings, I'll collapse that one, but I'll expand Build, Execute, and Deployment. I'll click on Deployment here, and it brings up our 
connections basically. We don't have any configured, so what we do is click on the green plus here, and it says, what is the name of the connection we want? Well, once again, I'll, I'll ask you to use just the standard naming that we've done, ICT 475 your username. Leave the type as FTP and go ahead and click OK. At this point in time, it brings up a window where we can specify our settings. First thing we need to do is set up our FTP host. Now, I'm going to jump back into the web browser that has Azure Portal. Once again, we're on the web app in the settings, clicked on properties, and this is where we have the information. We'll scroll down here, and we're looking for the FTP host name. This is what we want. Copy it. So I'm just going to click, and it copies it to the clipboard. I go back into PHP Storm, and for FTP host, I go ahead and paste in. It doesn't let you right-click on this, but if you do a control V, it pastes that in there. Now, for the FTP here, you need to remove the FTP colon forward slash forward slash at that point in time. Leave port is 21. Leave the root path as just a forward slash. And then the username. We can get the username, once again, from the Azure portal. If we scroll down here, Oh, I didn't even need to scroll up. This is the username. You need to include the ICT 475 username backwards slash ICT user. It needs to be all of that. You can just simply click the copy button over here, go back into PHP Storm, click in the username, and paste it in there. Control V, paste that in there. Next, you can you specify the password. Once again, the password I had you use is ICT user 123, capital I, capital C, capital T, capital U, lowercase s, lowercase e, lowercase r, 123. And we're going to have it remember our password. We need to make one more setting change. We, we have to click on the advanced options button here and then select passive mode. That's just how the FTP operates and it's, it's one way of sending information back and forth. They use a passive mode. We can click on OK, closes this. Now we can click test FTP connection. It'll think about it, it'll connect in and you should get successfully connected at this point in time. Now we can, we'll jump over here to the mappings tab and on the mappings tab, what we need to do is make sure that this local path here is the directory we set up. Remember when we set that up as our project. So by default, it, I just took the defaults and stuck it here, and it should end in ICT 475 username. Now, the deployment path on the server is the actual path on the Azure web server that is hosting your website. Now, you can type it in here, or you can click on this little button over here, and it'll actually connect to the web server. So we're going across the internet, connecting there. This is the directory structure that's there already. Our web's website is actually stored in a couple folders in. So expand out site, and then www root or www root. This is where all of our files are going to be uploaded. This is the root of our website. Now the reason they do that is a lot of times uh, log files aren't necessarily part of your website and you don't want those available to the general public so we segment that out. Also if there's different parts that may be used for calculations or uh, some sort of database or Excel table or something that you reference, you don't necessarily want to put it in the WW root, root of your website, but you want it to be accessible by the web server itself, so you'd put it here in the site folder. But what we want to specify here is the WW root folder. Once again, notice that this is what it is. Go ahead and click OK. That's what it looks like at that point in time and just leave the web path on the server as this. 
Once you have that information here, we'll jump back to the connection tab and we need to update this server URL. This allows you for quick browsing of the web server. We'll set that up. And this is the actual web server address. Once again, we'll jump back into our Azure portal and this is our web address. Now, I'm actually gonna go back to the web app pane over here, this URL, because it'll allow me to do a click to copy. Go ahead and I clicked and I copied it. Jump back into PHP Storm, delete everything that's in there, and then paste it back in, Control V. There we go. Here, we need to make sure we have the HTTP colon forward slash forward slash. And we can test it to make sure it works by clicking the open. Opens up your web browser and this is the default Azure web page. That shows it works. Close out of that, back into PHP Storm. We're good to go at this point in time. So we can click OK, closes the setting windows. Now, to show that we actually have the connections, what we can do is click on Tools, and then Deployment, and then come down to the bottom of this last one here, Browse Remote Host. And then we look on the right side, it opens up this pane here, and it shows us all the files and directories and code we have on our web server. On the left side, once again, we have our local file. Left side is our local file, right side is our remote server, the Azure web server, and now we can move files with kind of dragging and dropping, or we can click and say, um, upload to project. It helps us in the long run. Once you have this set up, we shouldn't have to go back and touch this at all for the rest of the time we're doing it. We'll set it up once. That brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching.